Let's talk about mental health. Insomnia. Dating an insomniac or supporting a partner who has a sleep disorder. By Helen Sunflower Slee. My name is Helen and I am in a long-term committed relationship with a male partner who has a sleeping disorder, insomnia. There is no cure-all for insomnia because every case is unique and research is still inconclusive about whether mental health issues affect sleep physically or if physical health issues cause mental blocks preventing sleep. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Regardless of cause and effect, struggling with rest, energy, and an irregular body clock can take a toll on my lover's mental and physical health and has a direct impact on my own. This is not an adorable article about how I cuddle my partner back to health. If that's what you're looking for, you are in the wrong place. This is me, sharing our story, its ups and downs, trials and errors, issues and resolutions. I will not be giving blanket statement advice about how to live with an insomniac partner. I will outline the barriers my partner faces to sleeping well and how I both contribute to and combat them. We both experience frustrations and disappointments because being together is not easy. But we soldier on because we love each other and because being together in a healthy, safe, loving relationship is the best thing for us both right now. I think that sleep is one of the most important parts of our lives. While we sleep, our bodies are able to rejuvenate, heal, and prepare for the coming hours of busy wakefulness. I am a high energy personality, so I need rest in order to function well the next day. My partner is a low energy personality, but his body works similarly. Inadequate shut eye means that he is listless, lacking in energy, and struggles to get through the day faced with another night of scant sleep and insufficient downtime. This means that he can be short or lack patience, especially when I'm very energetic. I would be lying if I said we didn't have disagreements as a result of clashing moods. My energy can be overpowering, especially when he is lacking the rejuvenation that a restful sleep provides. Sometimes I remind myself to dial it back, take a break, and not be so full on. Other times, he reminds me that he is not up for bouncing around the kitchen or climbing up the walls. And that's okay, because I can't read his mind, so it's important that he says so. Open communication is one of the ways we combat disagreements, by always being honest and frank about where we are at and how we feel. If one of us is having a hard day, the other is there to support them, emotionally, physically, and mentally. Part of maintaining a healthy relationship is trying to keep a fairly similar schedule so that we are interacting, understanding, and developing together. It can have a big impact if my partner is always going to bed when I wake up, or vice versa, because our connection is limited. When can we talk about our lives? When can we spend time together? When can we take responsibility for the state of our homes? When do we engage with the physical side of our relationship? When do we date? When do we sit together to play games or watch television? When do we go for walks together or cook together? When our time doesn't sync up, we both have to make the time to connect. He dropped into my work when shopping and looked around for me. I walked by his work when traveling through the city on my way to or from home. We communicate via technology like WhatsApp and Snapchat to maintain a connection even over distances, especially when I'm working or traveling abroad. When we are in the same city, he occasionally brings me hot chocolate. Sometimes I bring him ice cream. It's the little things that make a big difference. For a long time, I worked in a supermarket while he worked in the creative industry. I had a dependable job with mostly predictable daytime hours while well, he could go days without shifts or rehearsals, only to suddenly have several days of late shifts and exhausting rehearsals which would disturb his, sometimes already shaky, rest cycle. While this may contribute to his insomnia, having a consistent daytime job did not help at all. Before we met, he worked a 9-to-5 job and had the same problems with sleeplessness. 
Once, he slept through a daytime shift out of sheer exhaustion after several restless nights. Two alarms and three text messages and phone calls did not wake him. He chose this lower-paying and irregular job as a result of insomnia, in the hopes that his rest issues would not affect his ability to work late shifts, and that the freedom would empower him to make more choices to help him work on his sleeplessness. What contributes to his insomnia? Worrying, paranoia about his health, which is connected to his sleep issues, and needing an outlet for his excess creative energy, which leads to him falling into intense thinking during would-be sleep hours. At times, it's simply impossible to turn his brain off. I can personally relate to all these issues. While I'm not a diagnosed insomniac, I have experienced anxiousness, over-fretted about my health, and tried to sleep when I'm wide awake and aching to paint or write something. Sometimes I have a hard time getting to sleep because I cannot find my off switch. When my partner is tossing and turning, overthinking, or trying to find the right sleep position, I remind myself that, while my experiences are not so severe, I empathize with him and understand how frustrating and helpless one can feel when your body and mind will not cooperate and allow you the sleep you need and want. Sometimes, a lack of physical activity during wakefulness, or a lack of physical tiredness at bedtime, can leave me sleepless and staring at the ceiling for an hour. And my partner has suffered the same way for hours and entire nights. If my partner is having a bad bout of insomnia, he sometimes cannot nod off until 3 or 4 a.m. While I've been in dreamland for hours, I'll wake up at 8 or 9 a.m., rejuvenated, re-energized, ready for the day, well, he desperately needs several more hours in order to feel human again. I could accidentally disturb him from his necessary rest in the morning when we are sleeping together. Or his restlessness could keep me awake at night. And he will try to leave the room to try to tire himself out in other ways and give me the opportunity to catch some shut-eye. There have even been nights where he has just dozed off to sleep, and I've shifted in my unconsciousness, made noise, or woken from a dream and startled him awake, which means he has to begin the difficult process of trying to fall back asleep again. Each small bit of lost rest takes away from his and my ability to function the next day. When this happens, either one or both of us can be irritable, but we have to make a point of understanding and empathizing with each other. For example, we went on a holiday weekend together in April 2014, staying in a bed and breakfast. On the second night, I had a nightmare about falling and jerked awake frantically grabbing for him. I scared the life out of him, poor man, and woke him. I was so incoherent, I only sleepily said, I thought you were falling out of the bed, before rolling back over and falling back asleep. He, on the other hand, lay awake for another hour before he could nod off again. <laughs> we laugh about it now, <laughs> because it is hilarious in hindsight. But at the time, the loss of sleep was not particularly pleasant. I spend a great deal of time with my partner, who is in, affected by insomnia and does not take medication to control it, and I have to accept that the inconsistent bedtime patterns are a part of his lifestyle. I embrace them and use them as an opportunity to connect and show him how much I love him. My partner's job and sleep patterns keep his schedule at odd hours and always changing. This means that we are both kept on our toes. I make time as often as I can to surprise him after work with a hot drink, just like he does for me when I have a bad day. I send him messages, photos, or videos during the odd hours that he keeps to remind him that I love him or that I'm thinking of him. I make playlists of music that remind me of us or, or of quiet music that might help him relax or sleep or link them to him. His changeable schedule means that I can be just as changeable and surprise him when he least expects it. If he had poor shut-eye the previous night, a small thing like a drink or a hug or a song or a smile or a kiss can make a big difference. When my partner is struggling, I want to be as loving and encourage a significant other as I can. I do my best to support the steps he takes to attempt to regulate his rest and work with him on the strategies he employs to relax and bring on rest. I regularly ask my partner about his sleep patterns and listen when he speculates about his sleep tricks. I have done some research 
and I'm always willing to talk to him about different methods which could help. I try to understand how he feels, and I sit and listen when he needs to vent about how frustrating it is or how helpless he feels when his slumber is dictated by his insomnia. When we stay together, we go to bed at the same time and follow the same relaxing routines together. In this way, we can both try to rest well and feel close to each other. Finally, and most importantly, because my partner is an insomniac, I understand that his mental health issue is not his choice and that he's working through it to the best of his ability. I try to be adaptable, flexible, and honest. I try to remember that he's not avoiding, neglecting, or disregarding me if he has to cancel some plans or we have to sleep apart, even going several days without seeing each other. I make a point of explain opening discussions about how the sleep habits affect our relationship, and together we schedule ourselves accordingly. A very extreme example of this happened one week in December 2014. I suddenly had to work 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the supermarket where I worked at the time to cover another employee's holiday. While it would have been convenient if I stayed with my partner, who lived within walking distance from the shop, it meant that he and I would have terrible shut-eye for three days. I had to go to sleep at 9 p.m. in order to wake up at 5 a.m., but he would arrive home from work at 11 p.m. and go to bed at about 1 a.m. This would have disturbed my slumber at that time, and then I would have woken him right back up when my alarm went off at 5. Neither of us would have been well rested those three nights. So I stayed at my own flat and simply went to bed an hour earlier and woke up at 4 a.m. to catch the bus to work. He was able to keep his rest fairly regular and get enough hours. Had I stayed, we would have had three difficult days wherein neither of us had the energy, enthusiasm, or attitude to be positive and live fully. We would have been zombies, and we would have become frustrated with each other. Instead, we adjusted our routine, separated to our own places, and made do with distance communication for a few days. In this way, we supported not only his mental health and restfulness, but also mine. This situation was not without frustration because we wanted to stay together. I know he sometimes feels guilty that his sleep disorder has an impact on our relationship. Some nights we just want to be together but it simply isn't feasible. Sometimes I'm frustrated that the sleeping disorder can have such a big effect on our relationship. I also wish he could sleep whenever he wanted and for as long as he needs. We once talked about our relationship and he asked me if there was anything I would change if I could. I told him there is only one thing I would change about my partner. I would take away his insomnia. I feel that his health and wellness would improve and we could do things that right now are impossible. I really do believe that one day we will find the best balance for his life and the ways it intersects with mine. For now, we do the best we can with the tools that we have in order to maintain a happy, healthy, honest relationship. It's important for him to say no when he lacks the energy to do something with me just like it's important for me to say no when I'm unable to meet him because I lost some sleep or had to work overtime or I'm taking on too many projects. It's imperative for him to ask me about my day when it has been a challenging one, just like it's imperative for me to ask, what's up with you, when he's not in a good place. It is so very vital for me to remember that I am not responsible for his mental health, nor is he responsible for mine. But we do actively support each other in everything we do and have open, honest chats about issues when they arise. We treat each other with dignity and respect and love. Helen Sunflower Slee is a 24-year-old teacher of ESL, writer, artist, and social justice activist who currently resides in Naples. In a few months, she will reside elsewhere. Who knows? She's in a committed, long-term, long-distance relationship with a wonderful partner and loving every minute of it. A lover of creativity, travel, photography, and people, she always has something to say to the world. She writes a lifestyle blog called Sunflower Symposium on WordPress.com. And you can find her on Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, and YouTube under the pseudonym Helen Sunflower. To see her professional history, check her out on LinkedIn under Helen Sunflower Sleep.